Welcome to this episode of the AEC Engineering and Technology Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping engineering professionals find technology that fits their needs. Today, we're joined by Dan from Roadbotics, a company revolutionizing road assessments using artificial intelligence. In this episode, we'll explore the fascinating world of automating road assessments through AI technology. Dan will share his insights into Roadbotics' innovative approach, the process of road assessment automation, partnerships with civil engineering firms, the recent acquisition by Michelin, and also share some valuable advice for engineers looking to leverage AI and innovative technologies. With that, let's jump into today's episode. Okay, Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you for, for joining us today. Thanks, Nick. Great to be here. Awesome. I know we have a, a really, really nice conversation ahead of us. So why don't we, we just get started? Um, Dan, do you want to tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and what you do on a daily basis? Sure. So Dan Percaro, uh, I'll start at the beginning quickly. I'm, I'm originally from Clinton, New Jersey. I've lived in New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Virginia, and now Greenville, South Carolina where Michelin's North America headquarters are located. I lead the North American sales teams for Michelin Mobility Intelligence, and that's across two offers, Better Roads, which is led by Roadbotics, which we'll be talking about today, and then Safer Roads, which is a suite of data and insights products designed to help DOTs and planners identify risky hotspots based on driving behavior. So my sales journey started at a garage sale in Edison, New Jersey when I was 11. Uh, from there, I became one of those pesky university fundraisers. So if you're a Syracuse alum and, and I've called you, my apologies. I've also had a few side gigs, uh, uh, as we call them now. And, and so I've been a consultant for General Motors on the Camaro development team. I've been an adjunct professor at Virginia Commonwealth University, and I'm also a Navy reservist. Um, when we get to what I do on a daily basis, it's actually one of my favorite things about being in sales, which is how dynamic it is. So no day is the same. There's always a different customer or different problem to help solve. What our team works on daily is identifying the right partners that can benefit from our solutions. And so sales is all about delivering value. It does no good to sign a contract or receive money from someone that's not going to receive value from our offer. And so our team loves learning and loves asking questions. So most of my day is spent asking internal and external questions to find the right partners and customers looking for an AI pavement assessment that is consistent, cost-effective, and efficient. And, and Dan, thank you for, for the background there, right? And you mentioned AI, right? Which you guys, I'm sure you guys are well aware of kind of in the, the mainstream media has just been this like super hot topic as of late. But could you talk a little bit more about robotics, right? And how that AI solution, which I know you guys have been, you know, has been developed, you know, for a while now, um, how the technologies work and how it's benefited communities to this point. Yes, absolutely. As you mentioned, Roadbotics was started around 2016 out of Carnegie Mellon. And so Roadbotics has been at it for a while. Um, the process for AI is actually pretty simple and it all starts via smartphone. And once that video is uploaded, then our AI goes to work. It produces a pavement condition rating for every 10 feet of pavement. And because we rate every 10 feet, our AI model has trained on millions of images of pavement. And the output there is a simple one to five rating that gets color coded and mapped. It includes high resolution images and GPS coordinates for every image. Uh, and we use that one to five to provide a, a clear and actionable rating with five being bad. So a completely degraded road that needs immediate corrective action. And, and then one being a new or like new road. Which is which has got to be really helpful to your clients, right? Because you're taking, admittedly, um, what could be you know pretty complex technology behind the scenes, but just making it this simple one to five assessment rating that's just super easy for stakeholders to understand. A hundred percent, and we think between the time savings, so instead of having to walk or drive all those miles after miles of road and do it manually by just capturing video via smartphone and then having that simple output and letting the AI, the AI do all that work that you mentioned is, is one of the simplest and easiest ways to produce a condition rating assessment. And who, who specifically are your guys' clients, right? Are we talking, you said DOTs, right? Cities, municipalities, would you mind elaborating a little bit more on those? Absolutely. 
And so we really have two main verticals when it comes to customers. And so first are our direct clients. So cities, municipalities, like you mentioned, and then we also work with a ton of engineering firms. And so we're a tool for the engineering firms to then leverage their expertise further. And so we have cities that range from small uh, 30 or 50 centerline mile cities all the way up to your larger cities that are a thousand centerline miles and over, and then engineering partners all across the country and really some internationally as well across the world. And you had mentioned, you know, there's this, let's say like the, the older manual way of, of doing these assessments, right? And as a civil engineer, I'm, I'm, you know, familiar with walking, you know, miles of infrastructure doing assessments, right? But we know that artificial intelligence applied to road or infrastructure assessments is a relatively new concept. So there's going to be some challenges because it's just a different way of doing things. Could you talk a little bit about those challenges you guys faced and how they were overcome? Absolutely. And so, as we mentioned, Roadbotics has been at this for, for a little bit of a while here, uh, going on seven years, uh, and they were at the forefront of AI. And I think when you look back at, to your point on the civil engineering and pavement assessments in general, really most people are using uh, information and standards from over 50 years ago mm -hmm. with ASTM D6433. And so this was really one of the major challenges that the company faced early on is that there'd been no innovation. Those standards from 50 years ago certainly didn't account for all the technologies and options that we have now, whether that's computer vision, AI, et cetera. And so AI, as we know, takes a lot of training before it's accurate and beneficial. And so it took thousands of hours. And as I alluded to before, millions of photos to teach the AI what to look for, the pavement distresses to look for, and how to evaluate them. One of the biggest benefits through that process was getting feedback from civil engineers like yourself and civil engineering firms all along the way. And so when we link up, we kind of take sales out of it because we're not you know, that helpful with that, but we link up civil engineers with our data scientists and AI gurus. And after seven years of development, the capabilities are tremendous. And one benefit of AI is that it continues to learn and improve. And, you know, one theme of this show, Dan, really is just the democratization of technology to help engineers be more efficient, right? And again, speaking from experience, right, sometimes the miles of just walking infrastructure aren't completely necessary. Now, there's, it's not that, you know, technology is cutting the engineers out of the picture. It's just allowing them to be more efficient and do what they're best at, in, in my opinion. But could you talk more about the forging of those partnerships with civil engineering firms, right? Because there's obviously that old school way of doing things, but it sounds like you guys got pretty creative with merging maybe the old with the new and presenting a solution that worked for everyone. Great points. And that's exactly how we approach it, where we're not here to replace civil engineers or replace engineering firms. We're just a tool that they may choose to leverage. And so when we go back and think of uh, value added time and what an engineer is trained to do, we think driving is, is maybe not one of those things and walking is maybe not one of those things. And so with our solution, with a smartphone mounted in a windshield, anybody can go drive and collect. And so whether that's an intern, whether it's a city employee, maybe it is an engineer, um, but we think that's a huge benefit that democratizes the ability for anybody to collect and start the process. From there, once they upload it, that's where the AI come in, comes in excuse me, and does all of the work. And, and the way I've always viewed it is, right, like you're, you're taking perhaps some of those more tedious or mundane, like counting cracks, counting potholes, right? Letting the AI take that off the engineer's hands and then allowing the engineer to do like, right, what they're best and trained at. That's exactly right. That's 100% correct. Um, and also, instead of taking all that time, sometimes, you know, the, the, uh, the limitations may cause an engineer to only be able to do samples. By having, being able to drive and collect video, that allows us to cover an entire road network and do it consistently. Instead of splitting it up amongst multiple people or multiple days, it saves time, improves efficiency, improves consistency, and typically saves money as well. Which is, which is just awesome. And now, right, that robotics has been acquired by Michelin. You know, congratulations again, by the way. What, what does that mean specifically for robotics, right? Because now you're taking what, like you said, this, this startup, you know, six, seven years ago started at, you know, a research institution and combining it with, you know, a larger company that I'm sure has, has some pretty big plans for, for what robotics is today, right? Absolutely. It's super exciting for all of us. And so really what it means is maintaining the core of robotics and that innovation and those solutions, 
but ensuring stability and investment for the future. And so Michelin has been around for over 130 years. Uh, we plan to have another 130. And every event we go to, it's exciting to see all the new concepts. We also realize that a lot of these new concepts will not make it all the way through to maybe the same show next year. And so by having that stability, it really allows us the ability to go out and work with customers, work with engineering firms, and continue to invest and improve our products. Which is awesome because, you know, one of the, one of the, the um, drawbacks you'll hear say about like construction technology and new firms, right? Especially as you, you get to engineering leadership is, hey, like, you know, this company has been around for very long, right? What happens to our data, which is, right, that's a different discussion, but I, I really do love that point that there's stability and that trusted partner over time that allows your, your clients to have that, um, that peace of mind that you guys aren't going anywhere. Absolutely. And it's also very clear within the organization that being attached to Michelin is also a responsibility. And so when we think of Michelin's values, as well as our personal values, it's really important that we're doing the right thing all the time. There's no cutting corners. We're not out here trying to get one sale. We're really trying to build partnerships and invest in the long term. And speaking of those partnerships, right, going back to these, these civil engineering firms, like if you, if you're, you know, asked by an engineer, right, say, hey, want to leverage AI, you know, and other innovative technologies that I kind of see in the marketplace, but I'm not so sure where to start. I work on a lot of infrastructure. I just don't know where exactly to go. Like, what is your advice to them? Sure. I, I would say probably three things. And first, just spend a little time clarifying what it is that you want out of the technology and maybe also what you don't. And so is it help with assessment? Is it planning? Is it work orders? Is it budget? There are technologies that can help with all of those. And so I think it's important to think about and understand what are your core competencies and then what would be more effective to outsource, much like what we talked about before with utilizing an engineer's time um, versus driving or, or walking around. And so we think counting distresses and rating pavement can be automated so engineers can focus on the planning uh, to maintain and fix roads. Number two, I would say look for case studies and examples. And so it can be very exciting to be first with a new technology, but it can also bring on a lot of risk, both in time and money. And, and I think we know none of us have extra time to burn uh, learning and integrating something new if it's not going to deliver a benefit. And then probably lastly, I think about uh, kind of the analogy of considering the jockey and the horse. And so a horse that's fast or looks good is only half of the equation. And so consider the person or in the case of AI, probably the organization that's behind that, that horse. That great, great points, right? Because like, it's just to kind of restate, right? Your first point is just clarify what you're looking for. Because so many times, and I can be guilty of it myself sometimes, is just getting distracted by that new shiny object. But you know, you just you just have to know what exactly you're looking for. And then there's a whole nother piece to right, new and emerging technologies or the horse, but the jockey, or in this case, right, the engineers using the the technology need to know how to use it. And there's obviously a a time investment involved with that, right? So it's just understanding what your options are and making a, an effective plan for implementation, which we, we talk about a lot on this show just because, um, right? Just getting the software is half the battle, but then getting your people to use it effectively um, is, is a bit of a different task that still needs to be completed. Absolutely. We try to keep it as simple as possible to increase that adoption. And so we think by just starting with a shape or GeoJSON file and then turning that into a route that anybody follows today through Google Maps uh, is, is as easy as it can get to then drive around and collect, upload that to us. And then within 30 days, have a simple color-coded map uh, to show where you may have pavement distresses that need to be planned for. And, and again, which is, is awesome because you're already linking a familiar concept, right? Just navigation through a mapping app adding in kind of your piece of the pie, your piece of the pie here and just making it super simple for, for end users to use. Correct. Absolutely. So as we wrap up today, Dan, what's the best way to stay informed with, you know, everything robotics, right? Progress, um, software updates, new features, right? If the audience wants to learn more, um, where should they go? Great question. The number one source would be our social media. So whether that's LinkedIn or Facebook, you can find us at Roadbotics by Michelin. You can also go to our website, which is pretty simple, roadbotics.com. You can email info at roadbotics.com. 
you can find myself or any robotics employee on any of the social medias. We'd be super happy to help uh, and really just learn, ask some questions and, and understand maybe how we can help you. Excellent. And, and Dan, if our listen, listeners want to connect with you specifically to follow up maybe on any of the points or um, additional questions they may have from the episode today, what's the best way to reach you? Sure. I'd give two options. First, look me up on LinkedIn, right? Dan Porcaro, uh, P-O-R-C-A-R-O, or you can email me. That's Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L dot P-O-R-C-A-R-O at Michelin.com. Excellent. Well, Dan, thank you so much again for joining us today. Um, we're excited to just hear about all of the, the progress that robotics has made in, in infrastructure and this AI-based solution that's honestly just making the lives of engineers um, everywhere better. That's what we hope to do. Well, thanks for having me, Nick. I enjoyed it. Absolutely, Dan. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you next time. All right. Sounds good. Please remember, you can find the show notes for this episode at aectechpodcast.com. There, you will find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering and technology endeavors. Thank you.